Hi there. Are you Welcome serious? back. What is this? That doesn't even look like me. Get out of uh -oh. here. Oh, oh. oh, hi. I'm Mark. I've been a professional artist for 69 years and now I teach art for a living. In uh, this week's episode of my weekly series for artists I call YouTube Art School, I'll let you know about 10 things that most artists myself included, had to learn the hard way throughout their art journey. But why learn the hard way when you can learn the easy way on YouTube? Hopefully this class will help you save some precious time normally wasted on trial and error. Uh oh, quickly, let's get this class started. All right, class is in session. Pay attention. Today's class will be quite packed with life-changing information you should know if you call yourself an artist. With experience over the years, I learned a lot and I hope to pass some of that information to you. What took me years to learn though, I probably could have learned in one day had someone told me or warned me about it. It's just that the information wasn't really public when I was younger, so I had to learn it the hard way, mostly on my own. You, on the other hand, don't. You only need the next 10 minutes of this class, and mm, that's good value right there. As I talk, I'll let a time lapse of some new drawings play in the background, so if you don't care about the topic, at least you'll have something fun to watch. Let's get right into it. Oh, oh, never mind. I already started. The first thing has to do with learning art. Let's start with that. If you've ever felt like you're not making progress, the problem 99% of the time lies in how or what you're studying, not your actual abilities. Basically, anybody can learn art if you approach it the right way. It's just that most people don't, understandably so. It's definitely not obvious. Unless you're one of my students, of course. <laughs> you might find a good book at some point, a good class, but beyond that, you'll still be back to the point of what to do next, how to move on to the next level. Don't lose motivation, though. It's important to understand there's nothing wrong with your brain if you feel like you've been plateauing. 99% of the time, you just need to change your approach. Wait, but what about that 1%? Anyways, moving on, following up, let's actually look at a practical thing you can do to start seeing progress with your art. Observe better. Huh? Yeah, now, observation is the most important art skill. More important than anything else. We learn to draw things from memory by a process of observation and understanding. Let's say we're trying to draw a face or a body like I'm doing here. I'm able to do this because I've observed the human body enough with good enough understanding of what I'm looking at that I've been able to store the information in my memory. Now I'm just recalling that information. As artists, we often hear about the visual library. Basically, it's just visual memory, like remembering a tune or a song, except it's images. The thing is, you can't remember something if you don't understand it, right? Try remembering like how to write someone's name if it's in a different language with a different alphabet. Good luck with that, that's hard. It's much easier in a language that you know. The more knowledge you have about a particular thing you're observing and trying to memorize, the better you can observe it and retain the information in your visual library or in your memory. So when it comes to art, learn more about art theory. If you like drawing characters, for example, learn about the anatomy and gesture so that you can extract more information next time you observe a reference and memorize it more easily. That's what will allow you to draw characters from imagination eventually. The more you do this, the faster you'll improve. The uh, third thing, much quicker this one since I've covered plenty before, it's just worth mentioning again. Using references is not cheating. Use references. It's real hard to observe things better if you have nothing to observe. If you don't know how to draw something, you need a reference to copy or inspire yourself from. If you ever hear anyone say that using references is bad, cover your ears, start screaming over them and run away. Pros use references all the time. Next up in fourth, understand an art degree is worthless. You don't need a degree to work as an artist. As a matter of fact, most professional artists don't have one. It's actually pretty rare. I'll link my source in the description, but based on the last US census, around 85% of all working artists in the US that live off their art alone don't have an art degree. So why should you? Trick question. You shouldn't. It's literally useless, but will cost you up to like 150 to 200 thousands here in the US if you go to the most expensive schools. I'm not familiar with any deal that's worse than that. So what matters then? Your portfolio. Your portfolio alone. Maybe your personality too if you ever plan to work in a team. Work on putting together the best portfolio. Seek to learn the skills that will allow you to do that. Where can you get a full art education without going through the traditional schooling system and wasting all that money? 
Hmm, what a coincidence. I have the perfect answer. Do what over 10,000 other artists have done so far and join my art school program. Epic segue. You can use the coupon in the video description for a big discount on a full program, celebrating reaching this crazy milestone of 10,000 students. Join us, it costs peanuts compared to traditional art schools, and you'll get a better education, plus all the tools you need to build a killer portfolio. Do it now. Now, the fifth thing that I learned the hard way is that we lock in new knowledge we acquire during the day while we sleep. If you don't sleep much, if you always need a gallon of coffee to keep yourself awake all day, you're also severely impeding your learning process, like real badly. I made a class on this topic specifically because it's fascinating, link in the description, but the short version is you queue up a bunch of knowledge in your brain during the day, and that gets processed and fully memorized during deep sleep. So if you don't sleep well or don't sleep enough, you'll only retain or memorize like tiny fractions of what you learn. It's neuroscience, it's well-documented. Get quality sleep, get plenty of it. You literally get smarter while you sleep, only while you sleep. If you barely sleep, you're probably a dummy. I used to get the bare minimum of sleep to survive when I was younger. If only I knew that, maybe I'd be a genius. Sixth, and we're already halfway through. The rest will be faster, so pay attention. Take good care of your health if you want to be doing art long term. Just like an athlete, if you get injured in college, that could mean the end of your future professional career. In art, uh, just the same. If you burn out, that could mean the end of your future as an artist. I say if, but it's almost guaranteed you will, just like me. Just make sure your inevitable burnouts, just like a sport injury, are not major career ending ones. So to soften the blow, stay in good physical shape, Take on good habits like not working too intensely for long stretches of time without taking breaks. Rest your hands and eyes often while making art. Take on different hobbies. See other people. If you're in poor health, so will your long-term career. Make changes now. Now, the seventh thing is something that a lot of you might have realized by now. But if you haven't, being good at art is not enough to live from it. I have a number of students, for example, who are very skilled artists, but they're having trouble finding paid gigs or work in general. It's one thing to be an artist, but you have to sell your products too. Sell your services. If you want to make a living from your art, you also need to learn how to sell, how to advertise yourself. This starts by having an online presence and posting lots of art for people to know you even exist. Or by getting really good at networking. Either way, the art part is only half the work. The rest is advertising. The eighth thing we often learn the hard way is to stop being so protective of your art. Show it off and let people critique it. Unless you want to be a hermit, being an artist is an entertainment job or an entertainment hobby, whatever. We create art to share with others. At least I do. You might not be at a point where you feel proud of your work yet and might not want to show it off just yet, but it's too important to get people's feedback to delay it until your ego feels ready. Seek feedback or critique as soon as possible. It will only help you. Seek it from other artists though, preferably those better than you. It's more valuable feedback. Feedback from your mom isn't worth much, unfortunately, unless she's an amazing artist. And if you think you'll just, you know, wait until you feel more proud of your work to share it, well, let me tell you, you'll never feel ready. The more you delay it, the more it'll hurt when you decide to go for it. Share your art early, often and start learning from the feedback as soon as possible. It's definitely a little bit, maybe a lot, uncomfortable at the beginning, but you get used to it and the benefits far outweigh the hit to your ego. Most people are there to help. Now the ninth thing, and we're almost done. Don't stray too far from your comfort zone as an artist. A lot of students and a lot of you in the comments often mention, you know, being demotivated after starting a piece or worse, if this happens too often, maybe feeling burnt out. This almost always happens when you tackle too big of a challenge. It's one thing to be ambitious and plan a big painting or drawing, but if you don't have much experience yet, you'll just hit wall after wall during the process and that's just not fun. As a result, it'll just take you a very long time and the chances of you getting demotivated along the way are pretty high. Instead, try to work on art that you feel mostly capable of handling fairly well and stretch just a little bit out of your comfort zone to practice new things and keep improving. It's fine to challenge yourself a bit, you should. Just make sure the challenge is not overwhelming because that's the path to a burnout. Very common. Finally, the last one might be more of a general life advice, but it still definitely applies to artists. Everything you do now will either make things easier or harder for future you. Might seem obvious, but if you choose the easy path when you're younger, 
If you just play a ton of games or waste time on your phone making TikTok videos, then that's all time that future you will have to catch up on when you're older and have all new life responsibilities you're not thinking about right now. Study now. Practice now. Don't procrastinate too much. If your late teens and 20s are easy, your 30s and beyond will be hard. Set yourself up for success in the future. Take the harder path now when you have all the time and energy. I'm not saying just completely put aside anything fun, but be very mindful of how you spend your time. Be mature about it. Always invest some time towards your future if you don't want to end up like a deadbeat with nothing going on for yourself later in life. That's not fun. Uh, you can't take that time back. If that's still too abstract, well, keep in mind the you just like two, three or four years in the future will be a completely different person. A person forged by the decisions that you make today. Don't screw over future you. Set that person up for success. Very wise stuff. And uh, that's gonna be it for this week's YouTube art class. I hope that helped. If you like the brush that I was using for these drawings, you can get it for free as part of my custom brush set. Link in the video description. Use them responsibly. Also, don't hesitate to share this video with a bro who might need it. All right, I'll see you next week. Get out of uh -oh. here. Oh, oh.